Kia ora and welcome to the 52nd State Opening of Parliament. I'm Philippa Tolley. In the next half hour, their excellencies, the Governor-General, the Right Honourable Dame Patsy Reddy and her husband, Sir David Gascoigne, will arrive at Parliament to be greeted by Manua Whenua and to inspect a guard of honour representing all three services, the Army, the Navy and the Air Force. The party will then move inside to begin the process of the State Opening of Parliament. Well, after that weather bomb that's been affecting much of the country, luckily there are clear skies this morning in Wellington, although we do have the customary wind, keeping the flags active on the forecourt. Preparations are still underway. Everybody's making sure that everything is ship shape. And within the next few minutes, dignitaries will begin to arrive. The red carpet has been laid up the steps to the main entrance. And just at the moment, they've been given a quick vacuum just to make sure that they're in absolutely pristine order for when the Governor-General and her officials arrive. The state opening is the very last stage of a process which of course began with the general elections which were held on September the 23rd. The opening of New Zealand's 52nd Parliament marks the start of the new three-year parliamentary term and it's the first time the 120 members of Parliament will meet as a Parliament. New Zealand has one of the longest running stable democracies in the world and the opening of the new parliament is one of the few times when the Crown and the House of Representatives come together as parliament in a ceremonial display. New Zealand Parliament, of course, has two parts, the Sovereign and the House of Representatives and in New Zealand the Sovereign is represented by the Governor-General. Today's proceedings come at the end of several other formal steps. After an agreement on forming a government was reached, the new ministerial executive, including the new Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, was sworn in at Government House two weeks ago. Following a general election, the Parliament meets for the first time when the Governor-General makes a proclamation summoning Parliament. The proclamation specifies the time and place at which Parliament is to meet, and that pl place is the parliamentary precincts where we are today, and that time was yesterday when MPs were sworn in. Rounds of Parliament, flags flying. Not so many people here just yet, but of course it's a while before the Governor General arrives. So Parliament was officially opened yesterday in what's known as the Commission Opening of Parliament. It's called the Commission Opening because the Governor General sends three Commissioners to the House to declare Parliament open on her behalf. The commissioners are senior judges and yesterday the Chief Justice, Dame Sean Elias, and two senior judges, the Supreme Court Justices, the Honourable Marco Regan and the Honourable Ellen France, act as, as the commissioners. At yesterday's opening, each Member of Parliament was sworn in and Trevor Mallard was elected as the Speaker of the House. And we can see the Legislative Council chamber there where 
already people are taking their seats. Now, despite all the ceremonies being held in the past couple of days, surrounded by all the officials swearing in. MPs, of course, have been MPs since the official election results were returned. But they're not fully members of the House of Representatives until they swear fealty to the sovereign. Until members are sworn in, which happened yesterday, they can't speak or vote in the House. So everyone swears an oath on a holy book of their choice or takes an affirmation, a promise without recourse to a higher power. MPs can make their oaths in Māori or their affirmations in Māori or English, but the current law doesn't allow Pacifica or other languages. Although with agreement, MPs can repeat the oath in another language immediately afterwards. And indeed yesterday, a number of MPs took up that option. Jenny Salisa, for example, repeated her oath in Tongan. Kanwalit Singh repeated his affirmation in Hindi. And also... Jiang Yang repeated his swearing in, in Chinese. So already seated in the legislative chamber are members of the diplomatic corps. And that's where the Governor-General will be giving the speech outlining the government's legislative policy and plans. The Diplomatic Corps is led by the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, and that's the Samoan High Commissioner, His Excellency Mr Liasi Papali'i Tommy Scanlon. His Excellency is the longest-serving foreign diplomat based in Wellington. And so, of course, along with the MPs being sworn in yesterday at the Commission opening, the Speaker, Trevor Mylard, was also elected. And among the dignitaries who are assembling ahead of today's proceedings is a former Prime Minister, Jim Bolger, along with the diplomats and other invited guests. We also have former speakers in attendance. Lockwood Smith is also among those who are just moving in to take their seats. The speaker's role in Parliament is to preside over debates and the speaker's responsible for maintaining order. Maintaining order. If the whole House, rather than the Executive, wants to send a message to the Sovereign, it's the Speaker whose duty it is to convey it. And it's that role that's behind the reluctance of a newly elected Speaker, who was sometimes dragged to the chair because, once upon a time, being the bearer of bad news was an unenviable occupation, especially to some of the monarchs of the past. In reality, of course, many Speakers are keen to take on the role, and that was certainly the case with Trevor Mallard yesterday, who didn't need to be dragged and, and happily walked into his new position. And we now have members of the Defence Force arriving, including the Chief of Defence Force, Lieutenant General Tim Keating, and the Service Chiefs. It's the Chief of the Navy, Rear Admiral John Martin, the Chief of the Army, Major General Peter Kelly, and the Chief of the Air Force, Air Vice Marshal Tony Davies. And they're accompanied by three honorary aide-de-camp, 
and Deputy Personnel Staff Officer, the Chief of the Defence Force, and they've now arrived at the main steps of Parliament. And indeed, that group is now proceeding up the main steps of Parliament. And they, of course, are all wearing ceremonial uniforms. The Navy, of course, in shining white. And that group has just moved inside of Parliament. With the swearing in of Trevor Mallard as Speaker yesterday, of course, he took up not just an administrative function, he also became third in the line to the throne in New Zealand's order of succession. So the Speaker comes after the Governor General and the Prime Minister. Parliamentary buildings as they stand today were designed in about 1911 when there was a competition and call for designs after several fires had caused issues with the building next door which had previously been used to house MPs when Parliament moved from Auckland. New Parliament houses brick faced with marble and granite in the Edwardian neoclassical style and that was popular for grand buildings at the time when the design was made. The first stage provided chambers for both houses and offices. It had three floors including the principal first floor to which the impressive main entrance staircase provided entry and that staircase this morning has a red carpet up the middle as receiving guests and dignitaries and the next 20 minutes or so will also receive the Governor-General. The second half of the building, which was never built, was intended to replace Government House and included a Bellamy's restaurant and should have had a large new library. As with all things, cost was an issue with the building of the grand new parliament building. And construction did begin in 1914, but without the prominent domes and ornamentation to the roof that had originally been planned. Construction began in early 1914, but fell behind schedule because the suitable takaka marble was hard to find and the war gave rise to shortages of labour and materials. But members were desperate to get out of the old government house and Parliament moved into the incomplete buildings for the second session late in 1918. The construction continued until 1922. The Mayor of Wellington, Justin Lester, has also taken up his seat in the Legislative Council Chambers. Yeah. And now the judiciary are arriving. So they're just in Parliament grounds. The group has moved from the High Court, just across from Molesworth Street, which runs alongside the parliamentary grounds. 
The Chief Justice and the judges of the Supreme Court and High Courts are being escorted by the Sheriff of the High Court, who's also the Register of the High Court. And the Chief Justice and the judges of the Supreme Court are wearing their new redesigned robes. The new robes are described as a low-key New Zealand design. They're black, but within the fabric is a design of the kauri cone and leaves. And this echoes the design of the Supreme Court itself, which has an interior wooden section, which also resembles the kauri cone. The robes are made of silk. They were New Zealand designed. And they have embroidered shoulder wings, which feature three kete, or baskets, of knowledge. Each basket contains different dimensions. There's a basket of light, a basket of darkness, and a basket of pursuit. The other judges from the Court of Appeal, the Honourable Justice French and the Honourable Justice Asher, and from the High Court, the Honourable Justice Venning, the Honourable Justice Heath, the Honourable Justice Mallon, the Honourable Justice Duffy, the Honourable Justice Dobson and the Honourable Justice Joseph Williams are all wearing the more familiar traditional robes, the red with the heavy wigs. Dame Shana Elias and her Supreme Court fellows are not wearing wigs with their newly designed robes, however. The other members of the judiciary have got their heavy bell-bottomed versions. The Judicial Party has now also gone up the steps and entered into Parliament. The new robes for the Supreme Court Judiciary were designed by Wellington artist Ros Bignall. The brief she was given was to adapt the traditional black gowns worn by barristers and judges to reflect our common law heritage by incorporating elements which position the court in New Zealand and draw on New Zealand's own heritage and traditions. A few more members of the public are now gathering within parliamentary grounds to watch this morning's proceedings. We've yet to see this morning the Royal Tri Service Guards of Honour and Band. However, they will be proceeding in shortly. The Royal Tri Service Guard of Honour is provided by the Royal New Zealand Navy, the New Zealand Army, and the Royal New Zealand Air Force, and the Royal New Zealand Air Force Band. And indeed, that group is getting ready to proceed on. The band at the front, splendidly shiny instruments to the fore, are almost about to march on.
in open order. Right dress. This royal tri-servers, guard of honour and bands, has been practicing for the last three days to make sure everything is absolutely perfect. We have the Air Force in their traditional Navy uniforms. The Army in the centre with their khaki uniforms and those pinched lemon squeezer hats. And then the very white uniforms of the Navy. Royal Tri-Service Guard of Honour is now in place and waiting the arrival of the Governor-General. And among those waiting inside the Legislative Council is a former Governor-General, the Honourable Dame Sylvia Cartwright, along with other selected guests. number of youth representatives who are attending today's ceremony. And they include a group of four girls from Wellington East College who were specially invited by the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern.
Then we have some school children who've arrived, a small group, at Parliament grounds. Watching today's significant events and making sure they're up with their civics education. And as often the way with children, they're giving a quick wave to the cameras, which are spread around the Parliament grounds. Mana Whenua are also gathering, ready to greet the Governor-General. And today, along with this commentary, the events are also being translated into sign language. The Governor-General herself, who is expected to be leaving Government House shortly, took up office as the Governor-General in September last year. And she's New Zealand's 21st Governor-General and the third woman to hold the office. She began her career as a law lecturer and a commercial lawyer. She's had extensive experience in governance and consulting ro roles in both the public and the private sector. But she's also had significant involvement in the governance of creative and charitable organisations, including being a trustee of the New Zealand International Festival of the Arts. Dame Patsy is married to Sir David Gascoigne, who will accompany her today. And this year is also a significant event for the Vice Regal Office this itself, its, its centenary. Until 1917, the Sovereign was represented in New Zealand by a Governor who would come out to New Zealand to serve for a term and then go back to Britain. But King George V issued letters patent on the 11th of May 1917, elevating the Governor to Governor-General. And this reflected Britain's recognition of New Zealand's contribution to World War I and brought us into line with Canada, Australia and South Africa. And for those who work at the Beehive, it's an opportunity to great, get a great vantage position. They can come out onto the balcony that surrounds the outside of the beehive and look down across the court, forecourt where the honour guard is assembled and where the Governor-General is due to arrive. Today's events have been well rehearsed to make sure everything flows smoothly. On the grounds, even more children are gathering to watch what's going to happen very shortly when the Governor General arrives. But way back in 1865, when Parliament moved to Wellington, the ceremony was the most eagerly awaited public display of the year. In fact, one newspaper at the time reported that, above all, it's a free show which almost turns the missing of it into a punishable crime. But sometimes things did not go to plan. Often there were few members in Wellington, what with the difficulties of sea and other travel, and more than once openings had to be delayed until ships conveying members, and in one case the governor himself, had arrived. One year the band failed to turn up and play the national anthem, and another year the governor had to walk because the horses had jibed and refused to cooperate. 
Luckily, none of that will be plaguing events today. school children are making their way into Parliament grounds, all sensibly wearing sun hats, as despite the odd blustery weather, it is indeed a sunny day. Officials are now taking their positions, and that includes the New Zealand Herald of Arms, Philip O'Shea and the acting gentleman usher of the Black Rod, David Williams, and members of the Defence Force. They're now moving to face the Guard of Honour. Just a little more about the position of the New Zealand Herald of Arms Extraordinary to the Queen. He coordinates the ceremonial for the State Opening of Parliament, and this is his 22nd State Opening. The New Zealand Herald of Arms Extraordinary was appointed by the Queen. He ranks among Her Majesty's Officers of Arms and is a member of the Royal and Governor General's households. His duties include acting as the formal channel of communication and liaison between New Zealand and the Department of the Royal Household, which looks after heraldic and ceremonial matters, the College of Arms in London. Mr O'Shea was the first appointee to the position and he's held the role since the 6th of February, 1978. So certainly extraordinarily well experienced. In his role as Herald, he's seen nine Governors General. And also taking up position as the acting usher of the Black Rod, who serves, the Governor General's who serves as the Governor General's messenger for ceremonial communications with the House. Yesterday, he led the Royal Commissioners into the House at the Commission opening of Parliament. The office of Black Rod comes from a time when New Zealand's Parliament had both an upper and a lower house. And the usher of Black Rod played a role in the upper house, similar to that of the Sergeant at Arms in the lower house. And now we can see the cars of the Governor-General arriving. The Governor-General and her husband have been escor escorted from Government House across town by the New Zealand Police.